everyone, Chibito here, and welcome back to The Core. Today, I am thrilled to introduce you to a truly remarkable artist whom I deeply admire and respect. His journey began as a notable comic book illustrator in the 1990s, 1980s, contributing to iconic series like Justice League of America, Green Lantern, and Green Arrow, just to name a few. Transitioning to animation, he not only made an impact, but also clinched two Emmy Awards for his exceptional work. His contributions to animation are extensive, marking him as a seasoned veteran in the industry. Having a mentor who embodies both a teacher and a true friend is a rare gem. A true sensei, a true director, and a true partner in crime. Allow me to introduce the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Chuck Patton. How are you doing, man? You're killing you me. Doing? You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you, man. I miss you. I, I haven't, seen you. you. I, I haven't I seen you in a while. I know it's been a while. I've been checking you out on YouTube, though. <laughs> oh my God, jeez, this guy, this I'm guy. I'm all over the place. I'm all over the all place. All over the world. What do you mean, all over the place? All over the world. You in the you, Yes, you know, yes. Oh, you're man. in the Vatican one moment, and you're in Japan the next moment. And it's like now you're scuba diving. It's like next thing you know, you're swimming with whales. I mean, it's like damn. I can't do that. I can't keep up. <laughs> I'm just trying to enjoy it, man. Just trying to enjoy it, you know. I mean, like, dude, kind dude, of... all, all I know is I am so proud of you. I mean, when oh, I see man. what you're going, what you're doing now, and you are, you know, they're very. I mean, I, I know it's supposed to be about me, but I'm just gonna say, you know, <laughs> of all the people I've mentored, I am so triply just proud oh, of everything you've done. And it when I so see much. you doing it, you know, coming and it's from like, you. Dude, I hear, I, I, last couple of years ago, I had to deal with a dude who was trying to be a filmmaker. And I didn't want to do it, but he had to get a little, I couldn't slap enough pride, I couldn't slap enough knowledge in him. But one day I had to shut him up because he was going on about making this movie. And I told him about this friend of mine who came, just decided he was going to do a zombie movie, did it, it blew me away. It not only blew me away, it made Universal, and that's when Universal used that, that first film. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, the baby zombie, yeah. which I do, you know, that's that's putting your money shut in the sh shut up and putting your money where your mouth was. You want to be a filmmaker? Be him. And that was you. <laughs> no. And oh, of course, he didn't talk to me after that. But that's cool. That's, cool. <laughs> that's the whole point. Get his ass off. I but remember you. I remember you mentioning that actually that you were uh, uh, trying to do like a uh, uh, trying to talk to someone who wanted to do a, a live yeah. action. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's funny. He should have been live action. He did an animation. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have worked anyway. Because you know, uh, the main problem is he had really no. It wasn't. It wasn't. That was a terrible story. It had nothing to make it original story. Mm. Uh, he thought it was an original, and I was trying to tell him, dude, you're already twenty years behind the mark. Mm. But what's Phil, what, what I said. Bottom line is get it done, because you know the longer you're going to wait to try to make it perfect, you'll never get it done. Mm. And I don't know where it is now, but I did my part. <laughs> so I can say <laughs> I did my part. Well, you speaking know. of speaking of original story, I mean, like, it's definitely hard to uh, come up with something very original. Um, uh, I just saw Rebel Moon by Zack Snyder. I don't know if you've oh, seen yeah. it. Not yeah, yet, have you seen no. it? Oh, okay. No, um, no. <laughs> are you no. going to see it? <laughs> I don't know if I will. I mean, I made a mistake of looking. I mean, I read the synopsis and I went, oh, okay. Like, I haven't seen this before. And yeah. everything on the trailer went, oh, yeah, I've seen this before. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to be dismissive of any creative. But yeah. it's where it's honestly, I mean, I, I, it just doesn't. I'll tell you something that's blown me away. Mm. I'm jumping ahead. I know. I'm halfway through Godzilla. Which Godzilla one? Godzilla minus one. God, Godzilla oh, minus, minus, minus one. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. I can't wait to see yeah. that because I've heard so much, so much about it. I don't want to ruin it. You've heard it enough. But what people were saying, and they're saying it for all the wrong reasons. Um, mm. The right reason is it's damn good. <laughs> you oh, know? Wow, yeah. All the reasons everyone's going on about it, 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 dude, it's so simple why this is good. Wow. Because it, comes, it just comes out of a natural state of going, they've done all this other shit, but take yeah. it back to the original. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Right, right. And it just, I'm halfway through this and it's like, holy shit. And so also I look at you know, go ahead, man. I'm I'm babbling. <laughs> and we, also, I was like I was just gonna say with with how impressive the budget was too. I mean, like in comparison to like yeah. you know Hollywood yeah. movies, it was yeah. for 18 million, I think. 18 million. Well, you know, 
they've taken, I think they took a page from personally. I mean, I don't know enough. I've, I've talked to other people about it. Some, a friend of mine's, um, my, my ex producer believes it's a little bit more than that because it's oh, yen, yeah. dollars to yen. So yeah. it's like, okay, maybe it's 15 million. Is it really in dollars or is it really in yen? The thing mm. of it is, is that the storytelling is economical. The mm. visual is economical. They, yeah. they use, you know where they put all the dollars here and yeah. they didn't waste yeah. time. And in yeah. some parts you can say they go, I don't give a shit and just did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, wow. So, I'm, I'm so excited to see it now. Oh yeah, my God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is it is it already out on uh, streaming? No, I found it on streaming. It, it's oh, kind okay, of cool. sneaking in. I think it's officially going out in the streamers. Like, oh, okay, um, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely. A month. Actually, a couple of weeks. Mm, because, wow. Because it's really shitloads of money, you know, and people yeah. seem to think crazy. So I'm saying that because I got excited about that more than yeah. I saw it the Rebel yeah. Moon. Yeah, I'll, what I'll do you what, what do you think of the uh, the creator? Have you seen it? I I, I started to watch it. Mm. I was excited in a way that I I was excited about the same way as Godzilla, where I'm looking mm. at the storytelling. So that's the thing. I'm looking at the storytelling, and I can tell mm. them the story. It's characters, and it pulls you in. Yeah. And if it does it in five minutes, I'm with you. Right. And right. what I saw in the trailers had me interested. Had me a little worried too, but mm. uh, I have not finished it yet. Okay. So I can't give you officially, but I know that, I mean, I am I was like, I got into the 10 minutes of it and went, oh yeah, this is something I want to watch. I like mm. the, I, they're going with this. This is cool. Yeah. Um, and with Rebel Moon, I'd be happy to be made a liar out of it. It's right. just, I just saw it and went, oh no, no, no. <laughs> but that's me. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to watch it so I can finally say it. You know? Yeah. I mean, like for the first uh, five minutes, I, I kind of already like, gave up because of the the story was just blatant i mean like yeah you know like yeah. when you know what they yeah. say you know you know you copy you steal whatever but yeah, this yeah, was yeah, yeah. a blatant blatant i was like oh my god from a fate from my all-time favorite movie too so that's why i was so disappointed yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> i mean dude, yeah. you gotta rip that off and that's the scary thing because i mean we're dancing around up so i'm gonna come out and say it it's the seven samurai and it's yes. like, you know, <laughs> there you go. But you know, Magnificent Seven did the same thing, and somehow yeah. they both are great movies by themselves. Yeah. yeah. This one, you just went, "What are you doing, dude? You, know, yeah. you need to hire yeah. a writer." Oh, wait a minute, you, you don't have a writer? I don't know. I yeah. I, I shouldn't say, but that's that's that, how yeah. I, I it's it's I it made uh, I was so disappointed because like I I like uh, Snyder, you know, he's done so many great things. So I, I know, was I really know. hoping that this will be like another revolution you know what i mean like yeah. another uh yeah. yeah evolution in your in his uh, work but um you know it's it's it kind of <sighs> yeah it uh I, I i started worrying about him after i saw army of the dead i thought that was uh i was yeah. not about that and but what do you think that why do you think that why do you think that why do you think that it changed kind of uh in a, in a bad way honestly i don't know i mean I feel like I've, I've, I was just telling my producer this because he was going about it and I went, you know, it's so interesting. There's so many new things. I have completely fallen back and I've always been this way, but I go back and look at the old shit. I look mm. at what makes the story. Why do they, why could OTV can do half hour shows and give you so much in a half hour and you got guys who got to take three hours to tell you something that somebody did it in half hour. You know, yeah. so I look at what they're doing and what they did right and then I see a lot of self-indulgence mm. from filmmakers who I got this grand story and you got to do all this to make it happen. And yeah. somehow I believe, and as an artist is dangerous, uh, dangerous, but it kind of not dangerous isn't a word, but it, you get delusional. That's the other one. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, think yeah. you've got this vision that's so important and you forget the people you're talking to. Mm. You're doing this. It's almost like they're masturbating in public. And they're showing <laughs> this thing and they're getting up. And I don't know, I'm only getting in trouble, but I don't care. I'm old now. I can do that. So, yeah. but, um, but it's like they do this stuff and if they get off on it and then they forget this, you know, X amount of people in the audience you've got to resonate with. And I always yeah. think of when I was a child and I saw movies, I was telling somebody about the old Davy Crockett movie that Disney did. Mm. And it's so historically inaccurate. But I remember five years old seeing this movie, and I don't remember shit about the rest of the movie <laughs> except the last 10 minutes, because that's when Davy Crockett dies at the album. Right. 
And I remember as a kid, they let us out after we saw it. Every kid was crying. It was our Star Wars because we wanted to go out and fight. You know, I don't know who we're going to say. <laughs> and then we realized, oh, shit, he's dead. And that really broke us up. And I remember the power of film, you know, even though mm -hmm. that was a doofus ass story, that's the power of visual of the pull of emotion out of you. And I think that gets lost when I see yeah. this stuff. A lot of his stuff has been diminishing returns of, okay, you're it's less of you caring about how to attack, uh, to uh, communicate to me and more about you getting out this grand vision to communicate mm. to yourself. And it just leaves the rest of us kind of like, I don't know, this is your story, not mine. That's yeah. what I feel. Do you, do you think, do you think uh, a lot of filmmakers nowadays are uh, becoming too lazy to actually really work on plot holes and all that stuff because they, they can always just bury it with the icing of like effects and all that stuff. So I think so. I think that's yeah. a danger for filmmakers for, for a long time. It's not just young ones. Not not I want to be that old guy going, yeah, in my day, great. <laughs> Don't get get my writers. Oh, that's I've been shitty writers all my life. But <laughs> or dealing with shitty writers. But I think nowadays because of technology, it mm. has made one a little more lazy yeah. or they, or take too many shortcuts in thinking that we can fix it. I mean, we used to joke, but it was a, a running thing in animation in the 80s when we go, oh, we'll fix it. We'll fix it in editing. We'll fix it in post. Yeah. And we would try and it'd still come out crap. But yeah. it made everybody happy because we all they cared about was, did you get the film done? And yeah. I think a little bit of that thinking has evolved because computers have made editing faster. Mm. We got more control over F-ups. You yeah. know, I, mean, I was just looking at an AI thing today. I didn't know it was AI until they pointed it out. And it was an actress who was playing a Marvel character and they happened to do a strip tease. And if you looked at this thing, you think it was her and you realize, oh shit, that's not her. Oh, yeah. and, and so you got people now who are saying, okay, I want to use that in my movie instead of what's your story about, man? Can you yeah. have a talent doing that story? See what I mean? So scary, there's, there's yeah. little handicaps. It, it, it's not even handicaps. They have these things that helps them get through this, and that gives them, I, I, honestly, delusion of grandeur that, oh, yeah. I'm going to get stuck so I can get this across. So yeah. I hope I answered that. I hope I didn't go too yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. But that, that's that's actually, it's, I was going to ask you about the, the difference between the uh, like the old school way of, uh, yeah. in, in animation, old school way and doing animation to the modern one. But like, you know, now that you brought up uh, AI, it, it's, it's definitely a, uh, something to talk about because it's yeah. first, first is like, you know, it's, it's uh, taking job from real artists and then totally. second, yeah. And totally. second, it's like, it's not really true art because like all you did was basically just type something and then it, you know, the computer yeah. created an image for you. And it's not, yeah. I, I don't know if you can call it yours. It, it's not yours. Right. It, it well that's 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 where the fight is now that's where the, yeah. the, the battle is drawn it's um you know i was talking to somebody else about copying about you know how when you come into going to comics mm. you know because we didn't have a lot of schools and didn't have a lot of people who were willing to pass down or you know you you learned the first time you learned really to draw comics was you'll copy somebody you liked yeah and yeah copy, copy them sometimes you get it so good you kind of like them i wouldn't mm. say you're better them but you're kind of like them yeah and yeah i got you off now it's a slippery slope because we got guys using that same argument with ai well i'm copying yeah. that but now they don't even want to tell you who they're copying they're just yeah. stealing it and and yeah. yeah so i think that yeah there, there's again the technology has given a lot of let's say less than courageous people less than talented people yeah this idea that you know if i can do it then i'm i'm i am that person and it's like no you yeah. haven't that's not a good piece of paper yeah just speaking of delusion piece. that's that delusion yeah. right there like people yeah. Yeah. who you yeah. know create ai art and then sell it and then call it theirs i mean yeah. for me that's yeah. delusion. That's like, and the sad thing is the public really don't know because i yeah. see them off on this but it's like no you don't realize i just saw this mistake that mistake you got five different light sources they don't know about that Mm -hmm. As a trained artist, we're looking at and see all the problems. Yeah. And we know you're making it very pretty, but very pretty doesn't mean it's accurate. Very yeah. pretty doesn't mean it's really solid. Yeah. I always like to call it solid. Can it stand on its own? You know, if you mm -hmm. if you took the color off, can it still stay as a it can it stand as a black and white piece? Mm -hmm. Or if it's a black and white piece, you add color, can it stand that? You know? Yeah. And yeah, I just to me it just it's another 
it's kind of what when we started in storyboarding, we didn't have we were doing it on paper. And mm -hmm. then later we got the Photoshop. And then everybody thought, Photoshop, save everything. Yeah. It's like <laughs> a tool, man. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like me taking this pencil and going, you know, I'm not the genius. This is the genius. No, this is just <laughs> a goddamn tool. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, because the machine is a computer and it does take in all this knowledge, it's got all these ways of going past and stealing stuff. And I can see the person programming and going, yeah, yeah, look what I did. I'm a creator yeah. now. And it's like, <laughs> you're not a creator. That's yeah. that word really overused and under, under and misunderstood. Absolutely. I, I agree. I totally, I completely agree with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what, in a way, I'm glad because if they were smart and knew how to get past that, we wouldn't have the confrontations that we have now. And now mm -hmm. that people are calling them on their shit and eliminating them, if they mm -hmm. were smart and knew how to get around that, we'd be really in trouble. Seriously, yeah. we're going to be in trouble anyway because they exist. It's going to be used. It's happening. It's already yeah. here. Yeah, it's already but, here. It's not going to go away. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just, gonna... I think I think that the uh, the the thing that we can only we could the only thing that we could do right now is actually regulate it. I guess, you know, it's yeah. like not overuse yeah. or or you know or not use the final whatever you get. Maybe just use it as your reference or something like that. Maybe maybe something yeah. like that. You know, um, it's called what it is. It's a tool. It, it, you yeah, know, it's like yeah. Hey, this is done by this, and yeah. uh, and you have to attribute it to the person you stole it to. You got to give yeah. credit. Got to yeah. pay the money now. That see, because we say regulate, the artist in me, the rebel in me, want to go. Oh no, don't want to regulate it. <laughs> the truth is, yeah, we do need to regulate. Yeah, yeah. it's like there's a reason there's a fence around the house to keep yeah. things out, to keep things in. You yeah. know, there's a reason we have those. Things. It's a, yeah. it's not just a gatekeeper, but it's a. I, I like to think of it's more of um, it's protection. Period. Yeah, it is. It is absolutely it's protection. So I mean, yeah, I want that. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, like the other side of the coin is it's kind of understandable, uh, understand and understandable too, because like if you are a businessman, you know, you don't want to spend much money with you know with art, using artists. So, but that's that's yeah. kind of where the conflict happens, you know, it's like from from the business point of view and like the artistic uh, uh, point of view. So, I have a friend who's a, an author. Uh, I say an author, and he's a big time author. I'm a big fan of his, and we met for the first time uh, two weekends ago. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me about this newest book of his. And I had done some art for him as a gift because he, he's his work has just always blown me away and I enjoy the hell out of his stuff. And we were talking and he was telling me about his latest book and he was like, I really don't like the cover on it. And I know what happened because mm -hmm. the publisher, you got this great piece of work and you mm -hmm. got to get it out there, get it out there as fast as possible. So why hire an artist when we can just take a piece of shit or <laughs> slap it on AI the hell of it, throw it out there. And the people who want it, they don't care. All they want to know is your cover. Well, he cares because this is his book. He's his characters. He's yeah. serious. And now he's got this stupid thing he's got to deal with and go, that's my book. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you because that's a fight that's been going on for longer with publishers. What do you put yeah. on the cover? You know, whether it's comics, whether it's you know, novels or anything, how you get, how, again, how you reach your audience. Yeah. There's some people in the audience who don't care. Mm -hmm. And and that's where we get into danger. I think mm -hmm. in terms of movies, the good news is if people don't like it, they ain't going to give you the money for it. Yeah. And the thing that cracks me up about Godzilla is, okay, what makes this Godzilla better than the other Godzillas? People want to see it. <laughs> that's as simple as that. It's a hit because people are seeing it and they like what they see. So they're going to see it, keep seeing it. And that to me is the bottom line with any of this. Does it satisfy the customer to come back and mm -hmm. give us not alienate us? Now, I don't want I, I don't even think we should have the right to say, you know, if they even if they like something stupid, well, the, the customers are stupid. So what? It's their money. You know? Very true. But there's that slippery slope again where, you <clears> know, <throat> the guys, producers are taking advantage of that because they, yeah. they don't know. So I'll just throw this crap on top of it. Yeah, and they get away with it. So you they know, do all the time. <laughs> all the time. All the, it's not gonna end, man. This is this is a yeah. this is like a fight that we saw coming, but never thought it would happen in our lifetime. Mm. Overnight, bam, AI. Who would have thought in 20, 
2023, we'll be talking about artificial intelligence. It's insane, man. It you know? is. It's scary. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, like, you know, there were there were hints here and there, you know, that we knew that it was coming, but it's not that abrupt. You know, it's like all of a sudden it's like, whoa, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like COVID AI. <laughs> you know? yep, yep. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got plague, now we got robot. It's like yeah, a cyber. Seriously. You know? It is, it is. Uh, you know, it is. We are in the Matrix, man. This is all sure. scripted. <laughs> the Matrix, the Terminator, and the road. You know? So, yeah. so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, man. That's so insane, dude. It's so insane. I'm laughing, but I, I am scared. I am kind of scared. I, I'm in a place yeah. in my life where it's like, okay, if I was starting now, I, I'm afraid for the young guys starting now. Because you guys yeah. got to know a lot of stuff that I didn't have to know when I came in. And and for someone like me who's been there, it's harder to stay because you got to also know this stuff too mm. to stay in the business. The business yeah. is, on the other hand, is something that I've been saying. Uh, my oldest brother was a teacher and he was trying to get me into teaching. Um, and he said, when this is all done, don't you want to teach? I'm like, hell no. I did that most <laughs> of my career. Yeah, and, pretty much, but, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And, yeah, yeah. But, he, but he had a good argument, you know, against my older brother. He's looking out for me. He's like, well, I got, he's an art teacher. He's like, I got kids coming in who don't know. And they see someone like you and they want to be you. Mm -hmm. And I went, that's the, okay, I see your point. If a, someone like me should do what someone did for me a long time ago, which was mm. pick me up. So right. if I was going to teach, the last thing I'd be teaching you is art. I'll be wow. teaching you that is yeah well survive. yep yep i i, I, I can attest to that i can i mean like you know yeah. when going on there man it's like it was like oh my gosh man that was like a, that, i was i was just talking to my dad how how uh how brutal you were in in a good way because that was like my that was like a special forces training i say you know under chuck exactly. i mean like no, I, he was, he was the it great was, no it's from. it's so, no. it's it's worth more than 20 years in college in art school. It's, it's, yeah. I, I, I absolutely, you know, can, can say that because it's just like the, what I learned from you is just not like what you said, not just art. It's because yeah. it, it, with your philosophy and everything as well. Um, yeah. And which is, I'm thankful for, I'm, I'm very thankful for. And um, my dad was as well. I mean, like, you know, we, we talked about you a lot in the, in the first, uh, uh, okay. in the first episode. So it's going to be fun. But anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, like, so you mentioned that you uh, that someone or someone also mentored you, right? Um, oh yeah, I mean, like, well, it's who, who was it? Who mentored me? I had a lot of mentors. That's that's the good news is I had a lot of people. Mm. Um, I think the person who I owe a lot to, and I need to give him a call before something happens. Uh, he was an old comic books guy. He actually worked for Marvel at the mm. time. He was the first professional I ever met, and he had me come over to his house. This is when I got out of college. And I was at that crossroads of, all right, do I take the safety job? Because I got to make money and yeah. do what everybody else does in this town, which is going to the factories and get on the assembly line. Nothing yeah. wrong with it. But if you're going to be an artist, that ain't what you want to do. But I didn't know how to start to be an artist. And something yeah. made me do a cold call. I got his name out of a book. His name is Keith Pollard. And mm. he was a top artist at Marvel. Wow. And... Um, and he invited me to his house, gave me a couple of hours of just hipping me and what I needed to do. And mm. looked at stuff and told me what I needed to know was the first thing I want to know was, is it, am I good enough? And he was like, you're as good as you want to be. You're good enough. I've seen people worse. I've seen better. The worse got more work. The better got out of the business because they couldn't keep up. That was an eye opener. Wow. Oh, ooh, you know? Wow. Yeah. So, that's because I was coming at it at the fanboy and he was like, no, you gotta start looking at okay, what do they want? How do I deliver it? Wow. On top of how do you grow? Yeah. And and he was having this shit around you. And I realized, oh, that was the other thing too. He was working, he's he was doing comics, but he was getting on. He realized I'm hitting the spot where, you know, I hit the roof of where I'm gonna go. So I gotta look mm. to other shit, I'm doing commercial mm -hmm. art, which was paying him faster, bigger money. Yeah. Strong refrigerators for ads. You know? <laughs> wow. And on this table was a Conan piece. He had done Thor. He had done That's Fantastic Four. And he's telling me, yeah, this is what pays the bills. If I go in and help them on graphic arts and shit, I'm getting stuff that I can put into, you know, I, yeah. can, I can make a uh, real bank on as opposed to this, where you hope that, you know, some editor is going to remember your name. I remembered that it didn't dawn on me, but it was a hell of an eye opener. Of, okay. 
this is a business. I got yeah. to be able to yeah. And so that was my first mentor. The second one was the man who brought me into DC Comics. Mm. Um, he, he's uh, Dick Giordano. And mm. um, Dick brought me in under, uh, we were all supposed to be, um, we're all, we're not supposed to be, we're all new talent, the people in this mm-hmm. program. He yeah. started. And as he, he was teaching this class as he was rising up the ranks. He went from being like group editor to editor in chief of whole fucking DC Comics. And he still wow. took an hour once a week to run this class. If he wow. couldn't do it, he taught one of the other guys who were old school top artists to come in and step in in his place. And he wound up giving me, he got me uh, an assignment when I didn't know, I didn't I didn't think I was ready. And he was mm. like, oh, you're ready. And he just wow. threw my ass in. And then after that, everybody I worked with, in my mind, was my mentor, good or bad. Mm. Um, I also have to remember the guy who also gave me my first start was my, um, when I was in college, I was studying commercial art. Mm -hmm. Not because I wanted to be a commercial artist. I had no idea how to get, in my heart of hearts, I wanted to be a comic book artist no matter what. Mm -hmm. And there was no training for that shit. And I had already jumped my major and changed my minor so much that, okay, I went from being a journalism major to, okay, now I'm an art major, but I'm not a fine art major. I have to take something. So it was commercial art. And yeah. that program was 30 years behind. Mm, Maybe wow. 50 years behind what actual commercial art was. Yeah. And we, my last year, we had a change of curriculum where the guy who took over the department was an ex-ad agency guy, mm. hot from Madison Avenue. The biggest program he ever put on was um, this thing called Legs, which was this uh, this uh, pantyhose for women that was put into an egg. <laughs> he was the guy that designed that. Again, it was an idol because it was yeah. money. And, yeah, know, yeah. He came back to kind of, like he said, hand down shit that he saw because he saw kids coming out of art school and stuff who didn't know shit. Yeah. And he saw our program was like, this is a ga- this is ghastly. This is awful. Yeah. And he saw what I was doing going, holy shit, you're the only guy who's got his eye out there on the future comics. And so he basically bumped me up, gave me, I went from being a C student or B move as B student in art to an A student in art and uh, got my ass out of there and gave me my head start. He backed everything I did. Um, I used to bring in Frazetta books um, into the painting classes and the painters were all these fucking fine arts. Classical, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they would kind of get pissed at me and he'd come in and go, no, this dude is doing it. This guy, <laughs> this guy is the dude, this yeah. guy. And he, and he was right. Frazetta just got recognized by the uh, Society of Illustrators. Mm-hmm. So he was on all these damn art paint books. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they're bringing in all these magazines with Frazetta. <laughs> and he was like, this guy, this guy here pointing at me. So he was my first mentor. And I can't even mm-hmm. remember his name, but God bless yeah. him. But he got me started. And everybody who ever pu- pushed me was my mentor. Every guy, wow. even the guys who wrote stuff I didn't like and I had to get past it. That was a mentor. Mm. So, wow. yeah. I own really that, right. and I try to give it to you guys. <laughs> oh so, man, dude, I, I I can't thank you enough for for everything that I've learned uh, from you, man. Because like one thing that I that really that really what makes you stand out as I, I've worked with many directors now in my career, uh, and and you you I definitely put you on top, oh. you know. No, because just the way just the way you well we're friends outside of work too, and um, but when it comes to work, you kind of switch that work mode you know what i mean which i respect because like you know that's that's a that's a different thing uh that's a something that's unique with you and also when you the, your your process so your 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 process uh when you're directing is like you actually really direct and you're not reacting there's like most people that i work uh work with call themselves director but they they're reactors you know they don't yeah. put notes on the script before they hand it out and they just like react on, you know, uh, revise this, revise that. But you, you actually really sketch out everything before you hand out to, to the artist, which is, to me, is like the way to uh, direct. So thanks, man. And even yeah, then, back in the day, honestly, that was considered too much by some people. I don't get that. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't understand that because it's like, I'll give you me know, five more years, you will. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I was going to say Tim, but you jumped in light years. You'll get it. Yeah. Here. Yeah. I, I, mean, I called you. I called you, Mr. Uh, who's that guy from uh, from uh, from that movie? Like who fixes things like, you know, they call and fixes the Tarantino movie. Mr. Fox is Mr. Fox. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Wolf. Right. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Like, you're the Mr. Yeah. Wolf in animation, man. Like, when something goes wrong, call call Mr. Wolf. <laughs> Chalk arise. I think I missed the wolf my way out of, you know, a lot of jobs. And I'm kind of glad of that because you get to the where you got, I got so tired of being called in after they started something that was really beautiful and watch them F it up with people who were, and you, nice word. I liked what you said, reactors, a lot yeah. of reactors, a lot of people with very limited, you know, visuals who believe that they, they, they're, you know, I mean, I was talking to someone about the show and they were going on about how this was so unique. And the only thing I think about unique was, because you, this is the first time you thought of it. This show yeah. that you're talking about has existed already. What are you doing is looking at Hong Kong movies and transplanting the woman with the guy or the guy with the woman, or in some cases, exactly what that is. But mm -hmm. you're the only person here who's seen it. And right now you think you're the biggest dog in the room. It's rough when you got somebody who knows what the hell you're doing. And I'm yeah. looking at you and going, well, tell me something new. Right. <laughs> tell me something different. It's kind of going right back to what we're talking about with Zack Snyder. It's like, okay, you've seen Seven Samurai, <laughs> you know? But, you know, and you've seen probably Magnificent Seven. But have you seen 13 Ronin? Have you seen, you know, 13 Samurai? Have you seen uh, this? Have you seen that? Have you seen the Dirty Dozen? Have you seen this? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Have you really been a student of the game and be able to talk more than just derivative? But, okay, now what's new you're going to bring to this? And a lot of the projects that I talked to with these people, the reason I think I got talked out, because I showed them I knew it better than they did. And it's yeah. like, well, here's the thing. I'm not doing this to put you down. I'm doing this to say, let's rise up. I'm saying, let's rise. I can help you get further, but I am going to challenge you. I'm not going to sit here and just put you, pat you on the head and tell you you're a little genius, pat you on the ass and say, oh, yeah, you're the showrunner, when it's like, this is your first show. Wow. You know, yeah, talk to me yeah. about 14, talk to me about 17 shows. Talk exactly. to me about when you had shows that were set up to fail and you didn't let it fail. Yeah. Now we can talk, now we can do something. And that shows that you are a student of the game. I, yeah. I love students of the game. Yeah. But I don't and, have, this, you know, go ahead, man. No. And there's a thing that I don't understand is like, you know, uh, they hire you. I mean, sometimes they hire you for that, you know, to fix things and then, yeah. but they would headbutt with you. So I don't understand that. Like, you know, they would still kind of, you know. Um, it's politics. It's it politics. Is, yeah. I mean, there's, I'm, I'm not going to mention any of the names of the shows, but yeah. those who know, you would know. Um, you know, there's a couple that I were brought on and I knew right off the bat, the problem here was there was so much ego involved. Mm. And all it was, was, and I've used this analogy before, and I may have used it with you guys. I may have started with you guys. When I'm saying, okay, if you're going to put up, you're going to build a car. You know you're going to need wheels. We know what wheels do. They go round. I don't care how you build this car. I don't care how pretty you make it, how complicated you made it. They ran on wheels. If you don't respect the wheel, if you don't put wheels on this, yeah. you're not going to move. But if you're going to come in and say, I'm going to make them square. <laughs> I'm <gonna> make them <laughs> yeah. Dudes, why? Yeah. Our wheels work for a reason, and there's a reason things are done. Understand why that, and then you made this easy. You're, make, you're making this harder to try to justify some intelligence on this, mm. or to try to make yourself feel like this is different, and it isn't. I don't. I respect a guy who says, this is the same old story. Now, how can we tell this to make it new? Yeah. I never hear this guy say that. Never. Every time they come up with a new idea, and I'm sitting there going, God, you know, I, I would love if one of you guys would just say, let's be honest here. We're telling the same old story. Now, the fun part is let's do everything we can to surprise everybody with the same old story. Well, the reason they can't, because they really can't. But the people who are listening to them, and I can't blame them. I blame the ones who hire them and put them in their place because mm. they don't know enough to say no. They don't know enough to say, hey, this is going to take, you're making this harder than it should be. They're just they get somebody who's going to be the next whatever. They want to be able to say, "We got them in here." Yeah. And um, and when you watch that enough, it gets to be almost kind of like, "Oh God, here we go again." Been in that room way too much. Heard this speech way too many times. Mm. You know. And that one show where I was Mr. Wolf on, it was so simple. 
it was like, okay, you need a leader to say yes, yes, yes. And then you guys who are under him aren't the ones who are supposed to say, you're supposed to shut up and just do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And up until the last day I was there, I had to tell them, you know, you're bitching and moaning about what you're, this one guy was telling me he wanted to be in charge. I had no idea I was put there to be in charge. Yeah. And I'm yeah. Like, told him, well, wow, this is interesting. I go, well, one, you don't know how to read the room. You, <laughs> you want to be in <laughs> You want to be in charge, but you don't have the balls to say you want to be in charge. And if mm -hmm. I put you in charge, you wouldn't know where to start. Neither one of you said anything about how to bring everybody together. Yeah. Everybody's pointing fingers. And um, that's what my boss wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, the biggest problem is I'm not going to be in charge. This next guy is coming in. And you're already attacking him. That's your problem. Mm -hmm. And if it was up to me, that would be easy to fix. And you won't like it. Yeah. <laughs> but it ain't up to me. But yeah. I'm pointing it out to the bosses. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. The new guy, you get to fix it. Yeah. And lady, he's telling me, oh, man, thanks, dude. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> you know? Again, you have so certain shows. But to my mind, you, I don't know you. I just know that from what I'm watching, you're a reactor. <laughs> you know? yeah. You're, yeah. you're yeah. waiting. And I went, I don't have time for that. Yeah. We don't have time for that. There's X amount of money in this show, X amount of people. We had so many studios. We had two separate studios that were waiting to do something. Everybody was blaming the other. Mm -hmm. They were the ones they should have been listened to. And that was the other thing. I said, listen to these guys. That's what they do. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Anyway, it's wow. it's interesting when you hear that. And it's a lot of his ego, a lot of his money, a lot of his both. Yeah. Sad. I think ego because is definitely yeah yeah gets in the way. It's just you know. just just they don't like to be outshined. Yeah, but come up yeah. with a real plan. That's it. Come up with a real plan. And yeah. if the plan doesn't work, be willing to say it doesn't work. How we fix it? Mm. How do we fix it? That's the other thing. I didn't hear a lot of we, <laughs> you mm. know. And they wanted someone to come in and yeah. because yeah, <laughs> but, you got to be willing to listen to them too. Yeah, I'm going to ask a favor. Can we pause for a second? Yeah, 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 sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah. I, I have to run to the restroom real quick. Go ahead, dude. <laughs> do your thing, man. Do your thing. Do your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna cut it out and everything. So That's it. No more coffee for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, 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 can't, uh, I can't have coffee anymore, actually. I have a gas. I'm, I have a um, acid reflux. Oh been, shit! Yeah, no, I've been I've been drinking so much coffee, and then it's you know it's just spicy food and everything. So I was just like, ah. yeah. so the doctor uh, said, stay away from coffee. So I'm like, ah, oh, I've been struggling. Yeah, it's been it's been uh, like a, a month now. Yeah, a month? no How coffee. Yeah, yeah. I'm all right though. I'm all right, man. You know, so I'm just drinking tea, hot hot water, and all that stuff. But uh, you know, I'm <laughs> flip to that eventually. I don't have acid reflux, but. You know, I mean, it's we'll be on here forever talking about medicine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the curse when you get older. You, know, you probably hear from your dad. Oh, this is oh, happening. And that's happening. Oh, his is gout. His is gout. Gout. Yeah. See, I've been fighting. I've been. I, yeah. I just went back on gout medicine. It's like, oh, oh shit. Man. Yeah, you I know? heard it's a pain it's, in the ass, man. It's a pain in the ass when you get it, and it, everybody thinks, oh, it's because of this and that. The truth is. It's a form of arthritis. I, I had to really read up on it because I wasn't going to put up with any bullshit of people. <laughs> oh, you know, just because of this. And it's like certain people have it in your genes, like arthritis. Some yeah. have it. And um, when it aggravates, it aggravates over anything. So mm -hmm. usually because you have too much of this, um, acid, what is it called? Uh, uric acid. Uric acid, and, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's like, the truth is, you can do all the damn things in the world. You have to limit that, and you have to have a, a med that would help you bring that down in your in your body. Mm, so, yeah. Well, that. speaking speaking of uh, getting old, I'm 43 now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Four three. Uh, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the reason why I brought that up mm -hmm. because 20 years ago, when I turned 23, remember uh, we went out that night. For my yes, birthday. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is 20 years ago. And then and then uh I was drinking. I was drinking and then you you looked at me because I was like kind of quiet and everything. You look at me, wait, yeah, are you all right? You okay? Why are you so quiet? And I was like, ah, I'm getting old, man. I'm turning 23. <laughs> and you're like, shut the fuck up. 
I think we went up. I think I was on your ass for like an hour about that. <laughs> 23, <laughs> what the fuck? Because it's funny to say that when we're talking about when I started, I got out of college later because I stayed a year late. So, well, yeah. okay, I was in love and I was waiting for my girlfriend and she was <laughs> behind me. But um, it got scary because I started realizing, especially when I knew I'm going to try to become an illustrator. And there is nowhere to go. So I was mm. scared. Like, where do I go? And then I look up and goddamn, I was 24. And oh I thought, goodness. as I read, as I talked to my friend, this Keith, I think Keith was laughing and saying, hey, you got time, but I ain't a whole lot of time. I think he said something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> and it was other guys that started when they were 17 and 18. Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. It's, I just got out of high school, <laughs> you know? It's crazy and, that you said that 24 because my dad, exactly the same age, started as a comic book illustrator here in the Philippines. He was also 24. Yeah. See, I I, yeah. I would love, you know, it's funny. It's like, isn't it? I've worked with a lot of Philippine artists, as you know. Yeah. The thing I always was envious is that there was more of a, a school of, of, you know, you got everybody worked from everybody, they learned from mm. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't meet another artist my age until I went to New York. And, you know, I mean, even when I was in college, I didn't meet other guys doing comics. I met other fans, but not guys mm. trying to be artists. Yeah, and yeah. it was kind of both an eye opener and also made you feel, I mean, you were desperate to kind of get close with other people. And then some of them you didn't want to get close to. By the time I got my actual first job, mm -hmm. this is where I kind of, I don't know if I told you that, but when you were talking about 23, I was 27. And I thought I was over the hill then. I was, I was really thought I was over the hill. And Neil Adams was like making fun of me about it, just like I was making fun of you. Because I was still <laughs> he goes, well, shit, I started at 17, but I was special. And I'm like, well, I'm not special. No, no, I was stupid special. You were special. You're here now. And now at that point, it was like, and then Keith's words came to me like, well, you know what? Yeah, you're young, but you don't have a whole lot of time. And yeah. I was always aware, you know, I mean, to me, I don't think I've actually felt comfortable as an artist, seriously, mm -hmm. as an artist. And this is going to scare you. This is probably going to make you want to kick my ass when you see that. <laughs> Not until I got, I think, when I turned 55. Wow. Yeah. Where I started feeling like, oh, shit. I mean, I'm not talking about not having the ability, but trusting the ability. Yeah, being yeah. a director changed my life. Mm -hmm. It made me, it almost gave me a split personality mm -hmm. because being a director was a matter of gathering a lot of things and doing them and having that vision and doing them. And sometimes you didn't even know it was going to work, but you did. Yeah, you had to believe it until it happened. You're like, you're almost like, which is probably why a lot of real directors are assholes. You get this god complex. I'm going to make it happen. No yeah. Matter what. And you do, or you fail. Um, but it gave me a mindset on how to start. That's what it gave me. When I was younger, at 27, I had the hubris of young of, okay, I'm going to do it. I had no fucking idea how I'm doing it. So many fucking mistakes, so many mistakes, so much drawing. That's why you need all that energy, because I put so much into drawing and drawing. Yeah. I wasn't satisfied. Even when I did something good, I would come back later and see a print it and go, oh, I fucked that up. Oh, I missed that part. Mm. That I always felt was my Achilles heel that mm. I didn't come at it like some of the other guys who were, oh, I'm the greatest ever. And yeah, I think yeah. that really helped them because it made them, they believed it. So they kind of kept going in that art. Me, I kept, I've got to stay a student of the game. Never well, feel like I progressed. Well, you're, I mean, like, that's, that's a great, to me, I, I, I really respect that because that's, uh, I mean, you know, you, you never accept that you're, you're, already good is you keep learning until you know you yeah. stop you know what i mean which which yeah. is which is awesome because you don't have to admit it to yourself because your work your work tells you tells a story already oh you know one of I mean? the mentors that's the other guy who saved my ass too one of my mentors a guy this is all marvel comic stuff uh, a guy mm -hmm. named don heck who was drawing for don heck was like the third top artist at marvel back in the day of the 60s 50s mm -hmm. And he was the guy, uh, if you had Jack Kirby and you had Steve Ditko, and then you would have Don <laughs> was one of the guys. He's one of the first artists on the Avengers. 
Anyway, Don was drawing Wonder Woman and um, and Justice League. And when I mm. took over Justice League, I got to have lunch. We had dinner together. And um, and I just poured it out of him. Again, you got an opportunity. I always knew when you got an opportunity, take advantage of it. So whether mm. it was talking to Neil Adams about was I too young or asking mm. Don honestly, what the fuck do I do when I get artist um, block? Because I felt like I was fighting that every day. Mm-hmm looking at me go, oh that's a good question I'm like is he making fun of me <laughs> I didn't realize later <laughs> yes and no he was getting ready to kick my ass in a way that has always saved my ass and he always told me okay you get artist block oh you get that piece of paper because she had that piece of paper it's white it's blank what do I do I'm gonna fuck up because you're right you're gonna fuck it up oh my god look at that paper and it goes oh my god I'm gonna fuck it up you know what I do the what I drop it on the floor I scuff it up I make it dirty as hell now I can draw on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucked up. You know what I do with that paper? I tear it up. Take another one. Throw it on the ground. <laughs> and I went to him and goes, he's serious. <laughs> and yeah. it told me, yeah, you, you ain't got time to go on about how great the paper is. You got to get shit done. Yeah. And that's what he broke it down to. You got to get shit done. Yeah, and he was holding yeah. it up. You can get rid of that paper and start over. Until you get tired of starting over. And believe me, when you're on the fifth sheet, or if you're dumb enough, tenth sheet, somewhere in there, you're going, it's good enough. And you're going to move on. And when it's yeah. done, you go, I learned that lesson. I'm not going to do that for the next one. And that's how yeah. you get past this shit. You got to keep working. That's yeah. the advantage I learned was that I needed to keep working. Even mm. when I didn't know what I was doing, I needed to keep working. Right, and then sometimes right. shit would come easier. Storyboarding mm. became easier when I realized. Okay, I gotta keep working. I gotta start working on shit I didn't want to work on. Mm. That was artist. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I want and, I wanted to ask you how you. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. That was that, no. That I was, wanted to ask you how you um how you got your break in animation because like uh when you were telling the story about when you were when you were in college, uh yeah. in, in in art school, you didn't yeah. mention that that um you didn't mention animation at all. So you no. were mentioning like graphics. W was it in your radar already? Animation? No, it wasn't. Yeah. No, that, I mean, if they didn't have illustration, they certainly didn't have cartooning. Because mm. that's what they called animation. Those, yeah, I feel old. But yeah, I didn't even have cartooning. It, I knew that, well, I'm in Michigan. So there wasn't any, the places you would learn that from. Actually, I grew up down the street from one of the biggest places they used to turn out, um, uh, what they call it, um, slide projector art. Um, mm. This is back before they gave you film. They put shit on slides and oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cartoons, and then they shoot them on these slides. And I yeah. didn't realize that the place up the street from where I live was the place they did it. And I didn't mm. know it was like a fucking fortress. So there's never saw anybody at the door to say, hey, come in. It wasn't until I went to school and I realized, oh, wait a minute, Jam Handy. There's a building up the street called Jam Handy. And I put two and two together. This is where the shit came from. And then later found mm. out, hey, this is where these guys were hired and hired the artists. They shoot the stuff. They put it on strips. But they were, they were starting to go out of business because of film. They started mm. to put shit on wheels. Uh, on yeah, wheels. yeah. On, on the films. On, on yeah. The so, films. yeah. So that was my first exposure of animation cartooning. Mm -hmm. But there was no school for that. I didn't, yeah. to, I didn't know until I... I mean, I got, I went through comics, still didn't know anything about animation. It wasn't until I moved mm -hmm. out here. And but obviously, here, like yeah. during that time, so I mean, obviously you're, you're, you were exposed to TV animations already. Oh, but yeah. You just didn't know, but you just didn't know that there's a job for it in, in Michigan or in, in America yeah. for that, for that matter. Yeah. That's true. I mean, well, you hear, you heard notes, you heard noises about it. Every once in a while, mm -hmm. if you saw something on television or you, yeah. you, some, I mean, what did save my ass too being a student of the game, was mm. I loved television. I mean, mm. I loved being a, in journalism. I was more print journalism. But yeah. you, when you're journalism, you're journalism. And I, again, I loved the whole idea of, I broke down what journalism was about, telling mm. and reflecting facts and shit. And then mm. it fascinated me that television, okay, journalism and television was so different. It was huge. And mm. so you had to learn film. Taking film class changed my life. Mm. That, because that opened me up to how to become a storyteller yeah, um, yeah. being a journalist was just reflecting facts being a storyteller being in uh, creative writing 
looking at film, breaking down film, why visuals work here and words work there. That came out of going to films. And I love mm. movies. And so I became like a fucking sponge on movies. I always yeah. was. But yeah. when I realized I loved it and that there was a philosophy and thought behind it, I soaked mm. that shit up. Yeah. So I took all the film classes. Um, I, at the same time, I was changing over from journalism to that. And mm. again, no knowledge, even with all that talk about television production, I learned that. My girlfriend was a television journalist. So I would mm. help my Okay, I'll be honest. I didn't help her. I wrote her papers. <laughs> wow. Okay. And she would get all this accolades and marks and shit. And we yeah. come back up and she's like, I didn't know what the hell you wrote. You know, <laughs> it was like, I was just making shit up. But it was great because I was actually exercising that creativity. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For also sure. reflecting what I learned. And, mm -hmm. and we went to all the damn movie festivals. I loved, back then, I loved, I mean, Movies. I love movies. I love going to old movies. Mm -hmm. and, and the big movies, you caught on how stale they were. It was the old stuff that got me. Because mm -hmm. all these books were written for people who were analyzing these old movies and foreign yeah. films. They went to so much. Yeah. Foreign yeah. movies were second. Whoa, you know, this is a dope. Yeah. You're the and one so, that got me into foreign movies, man. You, you, <laughs> you, you're like, you opened that whole uh, kind of warm for me, man. It was like, you took me to this uh, place that we used to go to in St. Mark's. Uh, oh yes, yeah, it works. A DVD yeah, yeah. store, yeah. yeah, yeah no, and then no, you just no. like you just showed me all these movies. I was like, oh crap! And now I still have the stacks of DVDs that I collect, all foreign, like, mo mostly Japanese. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Crazy, well, that's, 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 that it's so great now. How we got you know you can go on Netflix and it's all Korean. You know, I, I go on my other streaming sites, it's all Japanese. It's yeah. great, you know. But back in yeah. the day, we used to be a real hunter, and yeah. That, and the fun part was I love these things. I wasn't doing this because I'm going to learn to be this. I just mm -hmm. loved it. And it yeah. changed my way of looking at storytelling. I kind of wished I had trusted if I had took more balls and took what I learned from that and put it in my comic work. I didn't. Mm -hmm. As I was looking at I, I kept it two separate, American comics and foreign films. And I didn't think, you know, until I heard other guys talking about it, I went, oh, I guess I could do that. But yeah. what got me in animation was I got out here, lost a girl mm -hmm. I went, well, was in college with. And Wait, I in Los Angeles, you mean? Yeah, so I met someone in Los Angeles. Well, mm -hmm. she actually was a friend of a friend of mine who uh, I went to school with, and he moved out here. And I came out to meet him and met her, and then got in my head to move out here with her. And I remember mm -hmm. DC Comics, uh, Dick. Everybody's like, don't go out there. They're all stupid. They're all crazy. You lose your comic book. You won't work. You won't ever work. What the truth was, was, no, what I will find is animation. I would find other mm. things. To do. And then I kept, and that was the eye opener. I met all of these comic book guys I've heard of who were working in mm. animation. And it was like, what the fuck are you guys doing there? Why is Gil Kane working for Ruby Spirits or Jack Kirby? Well, because they were getting real money, getting real, yeah. going back to that business thing Keith was talking about. These guys are now getting um, uh, salaries instead of freelance shit and yeah. building on, you know, having benefits. Oh, what's that? Benefits, you know? And this is before the yeah. freaking union got involved. So it was like, you know, I'm seeing the side of, wait a minute, they, they're yeah. pieces that will pay you. I didn't like what I saw because I grew up on Hanna-Barbera stuff and yeah. it was never really big in Disney. Disney was always a little too highfalutin for me. And yeah. the Met animators from that was like, oh, these are guys who went at animation the way I went after comics. Mm. In other words, it started at the at the cradle for them. And I never yeah. thought I'd really be a part of that. But this other stuff where they were taking comic book guys in and bringing them into the business, that I saw, that was cool. That was like, mm. um, it was okay being entry level and you're getting paid well. So you didn't yeah. feel nice. Well, if you went to Disney, if you weren't that good, they really went out of their way to make you feel like you're never that good. Oh, That's wow. why I didn't yeah. like Disney. <laughs> it's yeah. like this Cal Art mentality of if you're not a part of Cal Art, you would never make it in. Oh, it's like, yeah, yeah. fuck. Yeah. So, <laughs> none of you guys can never hang in a damn alley. I can kick your, I can kick yeah. the I didn't care. I'm yeah. from Detroit. Okay. So <laughs> it's like, I didn't, I never, every time, I, I just was not a big Cal Arts fan. Yeah. You know, um, with it. And so when I came to animation, Again, I wasn't, you know, for five minutes, I did take a, a art course. This is after I got an animation. Um, mm. It wasn't for animation. It was for illustration. I, I worked with mm. some famous illustrators. 
And I, it broke my heart that I could, I, it was later after I learned all these, as um, this one great artist said, uh, he goes, you comic book guys, you motherfuckers know every damn shortcut. <laughs> and you, I'm showing you what to do. You can do it and fake it out and it will look just as good. And I went, is that? He goes, it is bad, it's good. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you know. <laughs> he was like, you know, uh, he was working up to where, you know, maybe you should teach a class. But I was, mm. my, again, I didn't have the faith in myself. And um, I had faith enough to know, well, if he thinks I'm good enough, then mm. why am I here? Yeah, I can be, yeah. And I can go back to the studios and get practical, you know, because yeah. that's where all this theory and shit, it's got to become practical. It's got to be something to do. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Also caught on really fast, as much as I loved illustration, illustration, as we know, was being phased out. That's why these men were cheap mm. teaching. These guys yeah. were the top guys in magazine illustration, poster, movie poster work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, these guys were, uh, the guy who I was took a class with was a man named Fred Fixler. And you look mm -hmm. him up on Google, this man was amazing. And it's a shame because it was like, okay, if you weren't doing those things they were doing and the studios weren't doing those, they were doing photographs now. Nobody was doing painted posters. Mm. 90%, I would say, yeah, 80% of their workforce was not out of job, period. Yeah. Because photographs was taken over. So I'm taking courses in a, in a style. I always wanted to be an illustrator. And now mm. I'm looking, going, there is no place for us to go. Yeah. You know? They still didn't talk about, and that was the thing. I mean, I remember asking Fred, goes, what about book covers? He goes, those guys, they rip you off. You know, these used to be magazines, but the magazines aren't out there anymore. Little mm. did we know comics was going to take that place. And yeah. Fred was not a comics guy, so he couldn't tell me from experience. And I already mm. talked to those guys, Don, Jack, yo, they worked in anime, they worked in at magazines back in the day. But they caught on fast that no, this is the way to go. This thing yeah. comes. So um, again, I was in illustration and realized, yeah, I'm doing better if I stay in the studio. I'm going to get mm. practical experience because also yeah. I was being promoted every mm. other time. I went from being a, a background guy, prop guy, then all of a sudden I'm a lead prop guy. Then I'm doing characters. Now I'm doing lead characters. You know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Now I'm art director. And yeah. I'm looking at it and going, okay, that's hands on. Because I've learned yeah. from the last show I worked on. And the last mm -hmm. show got me this job. And it used yeah. to be back in the day how, you know, you had to, you had to kind of work hard to get fired. You can get mm -hmm. hired in five minutes. I knew yeah. guys who easily walk out of one studio and get hired in the same day at the next studio, whether it was Warner mm -hmm. Brothers, whether it was, and it wasn't that many. Yeah. But, you know, and if you got into Disney, everybody wanted Disney because it was big money. And you can walk yeah. around with a Disney guy now and I'm here for life. Yeah, you were. You literally can be there for life. And, yeah. um, but I was looking at what they were turning out. And I don't want that. You know, yeah. I kind of like the shitty shows we're working on. <laughs> they remind <laughs> me of things. And we didn't, again, television's exploded. Television animation. Mm, was yeah. So the kind of things that I thought, well, comics taught me was my best teacher to fit into that kind of animation. Mm, yeah. How so, long were you in comics uh, before you uh, transitioned to animation? Six years. Just six years. Oh, six years. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's scary to me. I, I, I wish it was longer. Um, mm. But I, when I moved out here and I started getting less and less offers to do comics, mm. and I tried to work for Marvel and I got less offers, I was given this big blow up of, yeah, we're going to give you work. And then I would get really spotty work, mm. meaning that they would call me when they felt like it. And it's like, I can't yeah. live like that. And then that's when a friend um, who was ex comic book guy said, Hey, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I just did some work over there doing cleanup on storyboards. And mm. I'm like, what the hell is that? And I helped him on some storyboards. <laughs> this yeah. is so stupid. So I saw the check and went, holy shit, this is more than <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, yeah. this was yeah. only what, three days work or some shit. Yeah. And that's when I went, okay. Yeah. And then I saw an offer to come in and I took it. Yeah, I have I have a funny story about that, about the uh, the pay rate um back in yeah. the day. Because because I told my dad I was uh I, I thought of uh joining the army at the time, like 1999, mm. you know, you know. So yeah. it's like 
my dad was like, okay, yeah, if that's what you want to do, you know, I support you. And then he yeah. handed me this fucking union union uh, pamphlet where it says all the the pay rate yeah, 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 yeah. for, for oh, animation. Yeah. Yeah, he just handed it to me. I oh, take a look at this, and then I look at. It, I was like, oh shit, I'm doing animation. <laughs> Yeah, because we know the government is not going to pay yeah, you. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> no. exactly. Yeah. And I, was I like, got three I got older them. brothers. <laughs> I got three older brothers in the military, and yeah. two of them are officers. The other one, were, uh, I think, is he's got as far as a corporal, but he saw action, and you know, wow. it's like, yeah, it's not the same thing. It's not. The same. <laughs> it's not the same thing at all. Now, for me, it was like. Oh, it's like you know, too much watching uh, uh, action movies, and I wanted, yeah. to be a, oh, yeah. I wanted to be a seal and all that stuff, you know. So, and then, all right, yeah, I'll do that. But here's here's yeah. how much you're gonna get paid if you work animation. Oh, yeah, right. I'm doing animation. <laughs> lot safer, lot safer. You know, I can actually buy things. And that's my mistake is that I I realize when I look at it again how much I've wasted <laughs> over the years over stuff that I should have invested in. That was the thing too. Again, my, when my brother said, if you were teaching a class, what would you teach? And I went, mm. well, I the business of mm. when you start it, you got to look out. And we, none of us thought of that, of where are you going to be 30 years from now? And what yeah. do you want to have? The equity you want to have, uh, the yeah. things you want We're not talking about shit you can buy, but stuff that's going to take care of you when you can't do this stuff. Mm. What does that mean? I mean, I knew guys back in the day who would go out and buy an apartment building and they would use that as an equity. I didn't like that, but looking at it now, it was like, that yeah. makes sense, you know, yeah. or invest yeah. in something, you know? Yeah, but exactly. Nobody yeah. told you this. You had to learn this from guys around you. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I went, well, if I go to school or if I had to teach, that would be the first thing we talk about is what are you mm. going to do when what you do can't you, yeah. you know, yeah. if you think this. Because we were all, we all thought we were immortal. We, I mean, you know, I stayed eight years. I put in more years in animation than I did in comics. Mm. In the long run, yeah, I put in more time in animation than comics. Mm. It has paid off in some ways, mm -hmm. but it really paid off if I was smarter. You know, if I had that heads up, or didn't fight. I, I, it was almost like I always had. I, that was a running joke when I was at D. When I get pissed off in, in my department. And I go, I'm going back to comics. You know, knowing damn well. <laughs> you know, I mean, I could go back to comics, but I won't be making this money. <laughs> you know? yeah. But no, I don't care. As long as they leave me alone and they laugh, <laughs> yeah, he'll be back tomorrow. You know? <laughs> and, and then years later, I'm like, shit, you know, <laughs> I'm still. And then now, damn, now I'm directing and now I'm fighting to stay as a director. And that's mm. a whole other story. But. Yeah. But it's still considering that, look, I, I, I love, my first love will always be comics. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still in my blood and I still talk it, I can still feel it. It's just yeah. that the business of comics is not, um, you can't, you can't live off that. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. And animation, you got to be a little sharp, sharper. It's funny. People will say, well, it's harder. Yeah, it is. But mm -hmm. even still, there are things set up. It's a business. Mm -hmm. Comics is a business, but animation has a lot more bells and whistles of a business. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can have an, you got it, you know, you could, they invest time in you. If you're smart, you can use that investment and have it grow. Mm -hmm. Come to a studio, if you just want to do storyboards for a long time, good. You'll always stay busy if you mm -hmm. keep with the right people, stay, make the right moves, constantly keep your work consistent so that they constantly want to bring you in. You, mm -hmm. You'll keep yeah. And that's a lot better than comics where, you know, I mean, I had somebody ask me to do something. This was, I say recently, but it was in the last three years. Because yeah. he thought, well, you're not in comics anymore, but you have a name. But, uh, you know, I, I really wanted you. And I'm like, oh, God, here comes the speech. I can hear it already. <laughs> well, I spoke up my ass and hoping that's going to be enough. And mm. he goes, I'll pay you 100 a page. And I'm like, ah, uh, let me explain something to you. I mean, four times, yeah. five times that much. Just yeah. being with animation. Yeah. Well, I, I, I got you know that's the going because no. When I was in comics, I made twice that much. You're not even yeah. reaching twice what I made in yeah. comics. And now yeah. you're telling me that's the best you can do. You know, yeah. well, here's the difference. I know your books. I know they don't sell that well. But whatever mm. that money is, none of the artists are seeing it. So who's getting that money? Exactly. And if I'm not getting it. Then why the hell am I working for you? 
You know, it goes, maybe 20 years ago, you would have got away with that argument, but now you can't. So good luck with that. Find mm-hmm. some young artist who wants to prove himself. Go for it. I'm not against yeah. that. But you don't yeah. go to someone who has experience and you're expecting to use my name to sell your books and you're going to give me pennies. Sure. Yeah. That's, yeah. I'd be stupid if I took that. <laughs> you yeah. know? And we, man, yeah. But we learned the hard knocks. I mean, again, mm-hmm. I learned that through hard knocks. I've learned that, you know, no different than that pamphlet your father gave. I kept mm. those things. I looked at them. I've had to be the businessman and go, all right, I would love to be, unless I'm doing an X-Men book or drawing the Punisher or drawing Wolverine, I'm mm. going to be struck. And if you got those books, you got to make a decent enough deal that you're you're getting a residual out of that. Yeah. I got lucky and DC offered me residuals and I get residuals. Mm. If I had put in more than six years, I would have gotten better residuals I'm getting now. But... I'm do they still do that? Yeah, yeah. They still offer residuals for artists? Yeah. Well, these, oh, okay. I think what they've done was, it's it's almost like a grandfather thing, because I made these, I did this paperwork over 10 years ago. Yeah. And I've been getting uh, a certain amount. It's not as great as it was at the beginning. The beginning was like, oh, look at this big check. And yeah. then lately it's like, oh, that's cute, you know. And, <laughs> and it's like, all right, it is what it is. But um, I hate using that term, but sometimes it fits. It is what it is. Yeah. And I'm grateful to have that because what little I've done for Disney or Marvel, I have not seen. Mm-hmm. And I just recently got a thing from saying, oh, we may owe you money. I'm like, yeah, you owe me money. Yeah, you do. I'm shocked, <laughs> I'm shocked that you even thought of it. I'm, gonna, I'm just hoping I'll get paid before I die, okay? <laughs> so, but hey, let's do it. Let's go through the motions. Let's, I'm glad you guys did it. I'm shocked it took you this damn long. Because the last <laughs> thing was around 89. So it was like, yeah. wow. Since then, to think I have residuals coming. Yeah. So, wow. You know, that's so funny. You have to stay. But the thing is, my whole big thing is about, as artists, we have to stay on top of that. We can't mm. expect to be taken care of. Yeah. It's never really took care of you. Unless you are a, and I mean by superstar, that you mm. made money on something that they know they're going to make money on. Yeah. Then you get a yeah. chance. You got that door open that would give you opportunities. Yeah. And yeah. that's what gives Frank Miller money. That's what gives mm. Jim Lee money. Yeah. You know, you go down the line, John Byrne, those are the guys yeah. who have earned that. And I'm not saying they didn't earn it. Absolutely earned it. And mm. they are given that. It's just yeah. a shame that it wasn't across the board for everybody. Mm-hmm. That's the have thing. You, have you thought of a... Um, pitching your own uh, ideas and your own comics yes. but you should say that yeah i have yeah uh, i again it took me until i was 55 to feel like yeah you know what maybe i do know what i'm doing so it took me another 10 years to figure yeah. out okay you know i trust you i think we can do this so <laughs> I, i've been sitting on something i gotta get off in fact I've, I've told myself next year is where i have to start doing it um but, yeah I'm not over I'm- mouth. That, that would be amazing, man. I'd do uh, colors I, for you. I'd call there. Dude, dude, <laughs> oh, bless you, dude. I, I, I keep, that's the thing. I have no more excuses of people I can work with. Mm-hmm. I know you, several other people who was like, you know, that'd be great. I mean, in my heart of hearts, and I've had this happen 20 years ago when someone went, why don't we just take our team? It's when we were doing Spawn. They go, why don't we take our team and make ourselves a team? And I thought, ah, yeah, I want it a guarantee. And this is a lesson I had to learn myself. Mm. Don't wait for guarantees. Yeah, I was waiting yeah. for a guarantee. I wanted someone to come up and have the money already. What yeah. I forgot was from the people I know who create shit, they just create it. Yeah, they got it. Yeah. it. You got to have it before you can get a guarantee. Yeah, And that's what I have not done. So that's why I kind of told myself, guess what, dude? You have no more excuses now. You've done this enough. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I think it's, it's time, Chuck. It's time. Man. It, and it's we time don't even know. Time. And here's the thing you got to do it so that you, I mean, if I do this, it isn't about, uh, it's not even about if I'm going to make a money, it's going to be a hit. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing. You got to do it because you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Take for that sure. risk without, you know, yeah. this because you do films and shit. You, you know, <laughs> I'm saying this with a guy sitting there who's going, I don't know, I'm 40 years old, I don't know what to do. And it's <laughs> you, know, you got to start someday. Don't wait till you're 60 something. Yeah. You got to do it. And I've now done enough 
I mean, I've had people still come at me for things. Mm. I have a couple of things already. Someone, I have to talk to someone recently. I, actually, after this is over, I got to talk to someone about a property. And I'm at a point now where I'm willing to break their hearts and say yay or nay. Instead mm. of, who is something? I got to do something I fit for me. And this mm-hmm. thing I want to do fits for me. It's scary, too, because I have not drawn something for myself. But mm-hmm. I feel like the last year, certainly the last three years, everything I've been doing, you've seen stuff that I've posted. That was practice. Yeah. That was me mm-hmm. kind of thing. I haven't drawn stuff for me. So even though people pay me money for this, this yeah. is for me. And yeah. recently, like when I gave my friend that piece, he was talking about something and it went, well, but bear in mind, I wasn't doing this to audition for this. Although okay. if you offer it to me, I take it. I did this because I wanted to give you this and I was inspired. Mm. And that's what's more exciting to me, that I was inspired. I, yeah. I, I love being inspired. Um, I have not allowed myself to be inspired. When we were doing all that work, I wasn't inspired. I was motivated, but yeah. I wasn't inspired. I got inspired by what you guys did. Mm-hmm. And what I did was kind of like follow the damn instructions. That's what I was doing. Yeah. But I wasn't just taking, I wasn't doing what Don said, take a blank piece of paper, dirty it up. And, just, and then dirty it up. Because <laughs> yeah. he showed me the stuff, because that was the other question I said to him. I was like, don't you get tired of, you know, he, he got off just as because he got tired of drawing 20 superheroes on a page every mm-hmm. day. And he was like, yeah, I do other shit. And he goes, what do you do? And he pulled out this piece of art, painted piece of art this small, mm. of a, a plane. And I went, I know what that is. That's that's a B-25 Liberator. He goes, yeah, I drew this. And I'm going to sell this to Ravel. And he goes, wait a minute. You do the fucking drawings, painters? Or sometimes they just take his paintings and put them on the, on the model covers. Yeah. Goes, they pay me money. I enjoy, but I enjoy playing drawing planes. People don't think I draw planes. Yeah. And wow. so this is me. And I'm yeah. getting paid. And that was the first time I went, oh shit. Okay. So maybe I can do that, but I got to find the thing I love. Yeah. So that's, this last 20 years has been a matter of me getting out of my own way, looking at the shit I love. One of the things I love is telling stories. Yeah. So I need that. Okay. Because um, someone's like, well, why don't you do a film? Film is so, it, it, and long story short, too many people involved. <laughs> There's too many true. people Very being true. too much yeah. money. Too and much again, money, I'm yeah. talking, I'm preaching to the choir. You're doing, you inspire me when I see you take your thousands of freaking cameras and you go out there <laughs> and come back to film. And I look at you, he's fucking creating. That's inspiring. <laughs> That's what I have to do with a piece of paper. Or, or even get back to digital to do it. Because mm. I've walked away from digital for a while. I'm yeah. saying, oh, I need to get back in it because I think it'll help me get past this other shit. Mm-hmm. But I got to trust, as I'm going back to what I was saying earlier, I've mm-hmm. got to keep it as a tool. Don't make yeah. feel like I have to do this because of this. I got to be mm-hmm. sloppy. I want to be yeah. sloppy. I think yeah. I used to tell you guys be sloppy. You know, mm-hmm. if I, I, what I meant by that was be sloppy where you just get your ideas down. Don't get into the steam thing of being perfect. Just get it down. Right, right. Get it down. Sloppier the better, because mm. you're free. And yeah, I'm allowing myself. I'm listening. I'm taking my own lessons. So when I do approach this story, I want to do all these things. I know it's going to be scary as fuck, but mm-hmm. I'll be look. I'll be happy if it comes out as one book. Right. If that's if I die on that book, that's cool. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter. I had it's only have one Emmy, by the way. <laughs> but um, I was I mean, nominated right twice. Oh, oh you were nominated thing. twice. You were nominated twice and won one. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You you you're talking about it, it's like like nothing. <laughs> you know, it was so trippy because it was it was well, you know, I told you guys this back in the day where you know everyone's like, Yeah, the Emmy winner. Because let me tell you about the Emmy. The Emmy, it's almost like you know, I love Westerns. And mm. how you see those westerns when the guy has the fastest gun, and yeah. no matter how fast he is, they don't love him, do they? Uh, There's always some guy who wants to shoot his ass. There's always one guy who wants to take him out. Yep. You get the Emmy, so it's a target on your back. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't open doors. It does in arguments. It does go fuck. I can't yeah. stop him. 
but it also keeps you out of the room. Right. Because if you're not one of them, then you're, you know, especially if they're small people, they're people without no imagination. They don't trust you. They want to be you. They're, they're jealous. You got something they got. You got something mm. they're not good enough to get. So right, right. the one thing they got against a uh, got uh, over you is that they have numbers. They have the job. And, mm. if you're, and if you're in, if you can stand on your own, they immediately feel threatened. Why, you know, you don't need us. So yeah. I get a lot of that. I get a lot mm. of that, that show yeah. I was telling you about this guy with, with his thing. And it was like, you know, Someone was, even his own editor was trying, because I was telling him how to work with an editor, and the editor was trying to tell him, you know, he can teach you a lot if you listen to him. And the more mm. he, we kept, I would tell him to listen to me, the more he would pull away. Mm. And it was like, I took a Willy Wonka attitude. Do, do what you're going to do. Help police. I don't care. You're going to do mm. what you're going to do. All I can do is show you what I do. And when you fuck up and I know you're not going to listen, I'm going to try to stop you. That's a waste mm. of time going to do what you're going to do and in a lot of ways you need to because right. if you're not willing to learn then you really need to you're going to learn by falling down you're going to learn yeah. by you know and it didn't matter if he was wrong or not your name's on there you're going to have to back it up that mm-hmm. Emmy says my name was on something and I backed it up that's the big yeah. difference yeah so big difference. every one of us yeah. who won an Emmy has worked no one gets an Emmy because they sweet talk their way through exactly Work their asses off. I don't care if I even like them or not. <laughs> we know yeah. they work their asses off. But it makes yeah. you very, it, it's, it leaves you lonely. It leaves you, again, you're often not the person they want to talk to. Yeah. Which is a weird lesson to learn. That's weird. Yeah. You know, you know, you, know uh, you kept telling me before when, when, uh, when we were working together, uh, you kept saying, when in doubt, and then you open a book, reference, use reference, right? Yeah. Now I'm telling you, I'm telling you this, Chuck. When you doubt yourself, look to your right. Look to your right, man. Look at that. I, I'll be You're honest the boss, with you. man. You're the boss. I'll be honest with you. I, that, I do more than that. And I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass, but I look at you. I look at Jose. I look at our team. I look mm. at the other guys who I see doing shit. Mm. And I'm inspired by what I see you guys do. I inspire seeing you guys pick up the ball and run with it. You know, yeah. you took it off the page, like I used to say, and just do your mm. own thing. I mean, mm. that's, I can't do, I can't sit on my ass and go, I'm going to fail when I see you guys do well. And I goes, well, who got them there? Oh, I got to listen to my own. So, <laughs> so, yes, oh yes. so oh I mean, I looked over my shoulder, I looked at what you're doing, and I'm like, God damn it, he's doing that. And I need to go back out there and do it. And it's not even a matter of doing better. That was the big thing I had to learn too. And that just came recently of this is really, it really is about pleasing yourself. Mm. You got to please yourself. And I did not do that when I was in comics. I tried um, mm. or I thought I was, but I wasn't uh, confident enough or honestly mm. too busy to worry about it. And now it's like, okay, if I do something, I really want this to be me. I want this to come out. I'm yeah. lucky we have some shows that stand out because someone asked me recently, like, what is your favorite show that you did? It was, well, uh, work-wise, achievement-wise, it's true. Mm. Uh, personal work-wise, it was, well, Spawn, too. Spawn's yeah. always first. How can right. I forget? Spawn's yeah. the first. Turtles and um, Dead Space. Mm. And we didn't get a chance to work on Dead Space. I wanted you on there so bad because everybody, we went nuts on that thing. Yeah, but that the, was yeah, it's great. But I the mean, pressure like, on that was that we were so set up to fail. Oh shit! Yeah. That was one where I was telling someone they were going on about why oh, I got this thing. Like, well, what happens if you don't have that money? What happens if you don't have that crew? What don't happens yeah. with all you got is time? Are you going to let all that shit and you don't have the money and the people and all that and you don't let that get? Oh, hey, by the way, if you don't even have the script, <laughs> what are you going to do? You know? Yeah. And we did. There's that a lot of that, man. There's a lot of like no oh, scripts yeah. and then. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the thing is with Desperate Space, we had a script that was un- honestly unproducible. But mm. I love the idea and I love the property so much. And it was yeah. so, it was idiot proof to me. It was like, oh, dude, this is about who fucking gets out alive. How many yeah. days can we kill somebody and who gets out alive? That's all this is about. Right. And, and I'm not making that simple. I'm just saying now the fun starts. 
because for me, that's fun. I don't want anybody to know this guy's not going to make it. I want mm. you to work about how's he going to make it. And then just when you think he's going to make it, pull the rug out from under him. And that's when we wrote the script. Everything was based right. on that. How many times can we do that? Set you up, fuck up, and fuck up. And we got <laughs> up, up until the last minute of the show. Uh, yeah. And I freaking loved it. And also the most yeah. important thing was everybody came to an inspired. Because yeah, I had one you know. this gunfight scene. And I went, dude, you got a chance to do this. I, you worked on G.O. Joe like I did. We were always told you got to stay within this shit. I'm saying kick the fucking walls down. Go yeah. for the most, just go as audacious as you want. I want blood, guts, the whole thing. We're going to do it. Yeah. We're going to, I said, we're going to Mario Bava the fuck out of this. Just like <laughs> yeah, you told yeah. the guys on Turtles, we're going to do Sonny Chiba. <laughs> so Mario <laughs> Bava was, yeah. okay, we're going to tally a horror of this shit. And they yeah. did. And I remember telling Phil Roman, I was at this conference about it. And they were like, okay, well, how are we going to approach this? He goes, I'm going to honestly make this the most heinous, disturbed, animated thing Heck done yeah. at this company but in this industry in this yeah. in this job i don't want this to be safe because we're yeah we were forced to be safe i don't want us to be safe i want you to pull me back we're gonna yeah. go out there and yeah. we didn't even have that on spawn you know mm. well we had that on spawn it was set up to be that limited way. yeah but this was went this way and we went fuck that we're going over there and the game company went nuts they were like yeah 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 unfortunately <laughs> they didn't give us enough money to do that so and the time so but we still went there that was the thing that yeah. we, I admired us we went there anyway and to yeah. me that's why and you it pulled was it off fun. yeah I yeah. thank you I mean there was, it's been fucked up it's not the greatest thing but yeah we pulled it off yeah it's great we had eight weeks to get it done as opposed wow. to the 16 weeks Woo! Yeah. That is insane. That is yeah, insane. Was, and that was like a, wasn't it like a director, director video? So yeah. it's like, it's an hour or, or more. Yeah, right? it was uh, 70 minutes, 70 minutes. 70 minutes, yeah. 70 minutes, which is hard when you think about it because it was like, wow, 70 minutes. There are times, I mean, my producer was mad at me going, check, we're only a half hour in this before anybody dies. It goes, yeah, I want you to kind of, so think of you in the theater and you're watching this. You know people are supposed to die, but we're not giving mm -hmm. it to you. What yeah. are you going to do? Antsy, antsy. It's a and Jess, yeah. you're gonna go, fuck you. Then we're gonna rip them right out. And we did. It. Yeah. That's and it got his jaw get torn off and say, like, that's it. That's <laughs> it. <So, laughs> rules are broken. Let's go. And like, we ain't G.I. Joe now. So it was like, it was, and you know, because someone was like, well, it was like old 80s animation. It was, dude, I don't know what 80s animation you're talking about. If it's Japanese 80s animation, because I always love that. Talking about animation again. Oh, yeah. I didn't like American animation, but I was eating up Japanese animation. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it opened the door to me on everything from from um, Lupin to yeah. um, Dragon Ball to the originals, not the shit that yeah. was cut out. And I mean, the heinous mm. stuff. Um, I remember showing that one of the head of Deke, uh, <laughs> they'd never seen adult Japanese. And I had Legend of the Overfiend. Oh my oh, goodness. Yes. <laughs> it was on two cassettes back in VHS days. Cassette, yeah. We locked the door and showed them. And <laughs> one of my friends looked at me and they did this. They go, yeah, I guess Mine's worse. were blown. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. we watched it once. And Legend of the Overfiend is the one I always go, you know, when you think you haven't gone far enough, you need to look at this. Yeah, and yeah. They, did. they broke the rules. Nazi fuck machines, everything. And, yeah. then, and that's what I love about Japanese animation, like they, it, like yeah. let's do this. You know what I mean? Like there's but no yeah, limit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and I think as as filmmakers, as storytellers, once in your life you should do something not just you know not safe for work or safe for mm. home, but just something out there. Go out yeah. beyond yourself to see that you can do it. Yeah, it opens yeah. up new doors, you know. So it's, it does. Uh, yeah, that's Spawn crazy, spoiled man. me because Spawn actually set me up for that. That's why I was like, I should have mm -hmm. said Spawn first. But Spawn set me up with us. I mean, we broke the rules every time we worked on it. You know, we mm -hmm. said, okay, if we're doing this a Warner Brothers way, that's why I'm not impressed when I see stuff Warner's and they go, oh, it's an adult one. I go, dude, we have, you're not even close to what we want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had less episodes to do it, which is why I'm glad we did it. We had mm. no time for this bullshit. Um, yeah. We had six shows to get out. That was our entire season. 
But in that six year old show, believe me, it was stock full of visuals and storytelling, and thinking, yeah, we we'll do this. And okay, the easy way would go that way. But what happens if we only have shadow and then we have to imply that? That mm. took a lot of thinking. And yeah. changing the rules of how you board. I went over mm -hmm. a lot of boards where I just had to strip shit out and put in stuff, or mm -hmm. it was there. You just, okay, just freeze it on that kind of shit. And yeah. um, that was storytelling. And yeah. I would never have gotten anywhere if I didn't have that show to teach me to yeah. say, guess what, Chuck? The rules change. Throw that shit out the door. And Todd was actually, if all the things about him that was great was that he enabled us to do it. In fact, he was making it up as he was going along because he's learning as we were telling him, dude, there's no comics. We're not, you know, on the page, you've got all this dialogue. We can't do that. Now you mm -hmm. got to let us film. I was telling him, now yeah. you got to think somebody. And gave him a list of films to look at and go, okay, look at that. And then we'll come back and talk and say, hey, mm -hmm. now you see what was happening in between the scenes? Yeah. When we were doing the Spawn movie that no one will ever see, he was using The Godfather as his, as example. I'm not, I don't, <laughs> I don't swing the flag on Coppola. I don't, you know, he's a great filmmaker. It's just, that's not the greatest film for me. I know a lot of people right. love him. Hmm. On the other hand, I look at anything Sergio Leone do and fall down and feel like I'm at the Vatican. That was God to me. So yeah. when he was going about Godfather, he missed this huge point. Mm. So I'm sitting there listening to him. He was going on about how Pacino was important. No, he was going on about Brando. And I was listening to him. Yeah, Brando. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Ty, you realize the Godfather isn't about Brando. What do you mean? Because it's Michael's story, dude. Yeah. From the time he shows up, he's the little wimpy brother. Who the, went yeah. to, and yeah. his father knows he's the one that has to take over. He's exactly. seen death. He's gone through life. My sons are all spoiled. He's the quiet one who thinks. Mm -hmm. So I got to make him, give him this mantle of being a ruthless crime yeah. lord. Who isn't a ruthless crime lord, but a smart man. That's yeah. the story. That's what yeah. makes this, that's the thing that caught my attention when I'm mm -hmm. watching it. I don't care about all the other shit. I don't care about Sonny and all that. It was watching Michael become this guy. Yeah. And how he has to be better than his father. Yeah. And Todd wasn't saying everybody at the table was frozen because they were like, oh shit, he's gonna fire him. <laughs> oh, yeah. And when Todd was still with us, because yeah, I'm writing, I'm making notes. You know? <laughs> And I knew it got him, you know. <laughs> so got him. Oh, and, God, was like, awesome, man. and everybody's like, Yeah, now we got a movie. And unfortunately, it won't see it, but it would have been a great spawn. Um, oh my gosh. Did so that, they never released it? Was it finished or it was finished as far as post uh, pre-production done? Everything mm. we had recorded, everything was drawn, wow, everything was man. designed, it was ready to go to the studio. It was always almost necessary was to pick the studio that was going to do it. And wow. him and the film Roman got into a litigation and it got shelved for yeah. 10 years. Damn, who owns the rights that, now? But it's, hmm? Who owns the rights? He does now. He does now? Oh, he does now. But I hope it's, he released honestly, it, though. It's dated. I, I doubt he'll do it because mm. this is trying to do it in 2D and then they wanted to put the CGI spawn in. It looked like crap. Mm. And I kept fighting it and fighting it. And we kept pulling back more and more to CG budget because it just looked crappy. Yeah. And this before CGI was really good. Now, oh, yeah, we could pull off the spawn. That would be wonderful. Man, that would be great, man. I wouldn't be involved, but he'll it'd be up to him. That's up and he's yeah. got it. You know, he's now he wants to be his own director and bless him, he should, you know, he's yeah. got the chance to do it. Um yeah. I think he wants to be more live action anyway. Because that's yeah, the, other yeah. thing too, is the way he was writing this, I can tell he was really trying to be live action. Yeah, and I was like, well, okay, but you know, this is the medium we're working in, mm -hmm. and the rules apply. This is after the show, so we already, to my mind, the spawn show already set a precedent. Whatever mm -hmm. we did, we have to be better than that. It's yeah. certainly, <laughs> but be better. Yeah, the, yeah. So you know, because even now, if he brings it back. There's a lot to be changed. The, the story is kind of dated. Um, the style has to be created to mm -hmm. accommodate that story. So you got to not only rewrite the story, now you got to approach it visually in a different way. Which yeah. none of this is wrong. It's just that you just can't take the show we did lost its time. I mm -hmm. wish we could. 
I always yeah. felt if we went out, it would have changed a lot of our lives. We would probably right. been doing this on up until oh, God knows what, you know. But eh, it's, it's missed opportunities. You have a lot of those. Missed opportunities. Yeah. You go. There's so many things that you go. Oh yeah, yeah it would have been great, man. Shit, wow. It would have been fun. Yeah. And I, listen, we had the same. It opened the door for us getting dead space. Everybody I had on spawn mm-hmm. was dead space. So all yeah. same people that worked on the yeah. spawn. Oh wow, yeah. that's cool. They kind of opened the doors. That's why we got it because people were like, did you see what they were doing on spawn? <laughs> <You know? laughs> These are the guys that do this, and we was there was some other guys doing Hellboy, and I wanted Hellboy, and I found out who yeah. did Hellboy. I won't knock it. I'll just say it was different. Yeah. And yeah, we were all yeah. kind of, and then they gave us some, um, then we saw what we were doing on Dead Space. It was like, yeah, you know, who cares about this? <laughs> we got this. <laughs> and to this yeah. day, again, for me, it's like, all right, you know, um, I'm proud of that. I'm very proud. Mm. Of what we did. Yeah. So it's those three shows that are the ones that I go, yeah, okay, you know, that's worth having. And Spawn yeah. definitely is, is in me, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm happy about that. I'm very proud of that. Yeah. So no, I'm. So now you're. I. You know. I see your posts on uh, on Facebook and uh, Instagram. You you've been doing a lot of comics again. So uh, I've been doing commissions, comics. I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, if I go back, that thing we were talking about, if I do it, I'm gonna do it as a comic book. Yeah. Whatever I do, I'm gonna do it. I mean, I don't have any. The only reason I would say, if someone walked up and said, "Hey, let's do it as a show." Mm. I'll switch my mind. I know how to mm. do it. Yeah. But I'm going, I mean, going back to what we're talking about, I'm doing this for me. I'm doing yeah. it so I can have it as a book. And whatever mm. happens after I do it as a book, then that'll happen. If it goes into yeah. a show, a yeah. movie. But I want to do that book. That's, yeah, you um, should. You should. <laughs> I'll be waiting for that. <laughs> that's, that's the pitch machine I was explaining to play yeah. all the it was like you know comics are now the pitch machine for films and everything so mm-hmm. bottom line is get it so you can have it and if the if the thing doesn't happen this thing will still exist yeah you know, it's done and that's what's driving me now on this idea and i see other people get really close to it and still not do it and i'm like okay i still got a window there was a mm-hmm. point last year i thought you know if someone came up and did it I'm going to walk away and just wash my hands of it. Maybe try something new. When no one's mm-hmm. done it, I'm, I'm back to the hour. Okay. Looks like I'm being forced to do this. I got to do it. Not forced, <laughs> yeah. but, so, you know, fate is going, dude, you got to do this. You know, mm. so I got to do it. So next yeah. year, I'm, I'm, you're the first person I've said it out loud that next year. Is oh, my man. Own. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. You got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> or unless I get sidetracked on something else, but still, this is my. <laughs> but that's your goal right now. I guess my that's goal. A good, right now. That's a good goal, man. I believe in you, man. You're gonna, uh, you're gonna dude. make it. Yeah. And if you, I, if might you pulling, I might be picking your brain on how to do some of this shit. So. Hey, man. You know, if if I can help you in any way, you know, just let me know. You know, maybe like uh, putting it in a in a book uh, format or whatever. You know, so just let me well, know, man. Have, you know, I have people say they want me to do a sketchbook, and I I want something simple. You know, I mean, mm. I have a us do his art book, and he wants an art book. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. I, I, I'm not that damn famous. Even if I was, I there's some things I don't want to see in that damn book. The sketch. There you go is, again, Chuck. Here you go again. Look to your right. Look to your right. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'll do a sketchbook. There's someone about a sketchbook that's pure. I don't know. <laughs> now, if I do this book, this this other book I want, I would love to do an art behind. I want to do that for, for art. Actually, that broke my heart. We, um, they put out a huge art book on Dead Space. Mm. They, they did one, and then they did a smaller one. And mm. then they put in two frames of what we did, and the rest was all the game shit. That pissed me off. Oh. And then, because there's been two Dead Space movies, the second one not so good, but ours is better. And yeah. uh, and then they did a big art of Dead Space book, and again they only gave us two pages. So I thought, you know, we did a ton of art for this yeah. thing. We had to create the art that they weren't mm-hmm. ready to do on the game. Yeah which was even more fun because they were supposed to just give us shit and they weren't ready. So we created it and then they yeah. just took it and borrowed it. Um, so we had enough to show, okay, back sketches, sketches of monsters. We could have these easily done 10 pages in this damn book or right. our own book. 
of uh, art of dead space. So I would love to do something like that. But yeah. myself, I don't know. I just don't see an art of Chuck Patton coffee table book. My ego doesn't say it's enough in there. A sketchbook, yeah. I know you're going, oh, oh. I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> take your liar out of me. I don't, I don't know. You guys have to take me by the ear and just do it and go, oh. Yeah. I'll be I the just, first person in line getting that book, man. I just don't see it. A sketchbook, yes, I can see that. Because I've been sketching so much, I love what I've been doing. Mm. And, and I also keep saying, you know, you still got stuff to do. You still got stuff to yeah, do. Yeah, I like that, yeah. I'm working up to that when, honestly, 10 years ago, my brain wasn't, I, I didn't see that. I couldn't see it. I was either mm. too busy hustling for something or in the middle of this production or that production. Now it's like, you know, I don't care. I don't care about doing somebody else's idea right now. Mm. You know, I mean, it would be yeah. great. The only reason I could see it financially can be helpful. But honestly, creatively, nah, I'd rather find something a little more original. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear uh, you do that, man. Well, I, I want to yeah. Yeah, I want to ask you uh, an important question. Sure. Do you still go to karaoke? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sadly, no, I didn't. Uh, I stopped. Um, oh, you like, did? Oh, oh. Yeah. you're like... Dude, man, you were uh, you were on that. <laughs> hey, look, we, it was born with you. It was your fault that we started doing this. <laughs> to help you get back in the swing of singing, I remember us doing it. <laughs> and then it just came into me and became like this bug. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's, um, it, it's too personal. It's one of those things you and I can talk about, but I wouldn't want to put on it. Yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to know. <laughs> I, I haven't. I, I there's this guy on Facebook who's doing this thing where he's walking around like place. Well, he's in New York, and he's mm. making people sing with him for free. Not making them, but he's offering. And it, it really hit me because it's kind of reminds me of what we were like in Despa on karaoke. Because he yeah. finds these people just walking to work, going, and sometimes they don't want to stop. And all of a sudden, it's like. You got this song, and he's got this, you know, damn iPad with nine minutes. Yeah, songs. that's amazing. And he, and he gets them to sing, and I'm sitting there going, "Yeah, I miss that." But <laughs> that guy who was doing that, he's taken—I don't—I wouldn't say he's dead. It's to say he's taken a taking a break. Taking a long <laughs> break. It's, it was always fun. Always. Yes. Yeah. If yeah, it, was it was us fun. Going, I would fucking enjoy that. <laughs> right, it's been me for so long now, and even the girlfriend, yeah. she doesn't. Speak, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she wants to go. He goes, I don't have the energy, honey. It's too much energy. Yeah. You have to fight through the crowds to get through this shit. Yeah, and just it's just we're taking a break. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, I stopped drinking. No. <laughs> well, I <still> believe. <laughs> I should... You're like no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just, you know, I just got sick of it. I mean, like we did that, you know, way too much in New York and, you know, in California, but um, it's just, yeah, it's just like, it's not my thing. And I, I mean, I don't go out anymore as well. You know, it's like, so, I mean, well, yeah. don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I still kind of have a sip of uh, whiskey yeah, when yeah, I'm yeah, riding, yeah. you know, but like, I don't go out and drink no more, you know? So sure. it's like. Well, I'm on the same thing. I mean, I used to, um, especially during the pandemic, I was hitting some sake for a while there. Yeah, there, then, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it was a, it was, I've gone through the same thing. I didn't make it, a, I stopped drinking, but it was, I was, I was using certain meds for certain things, one of the gout medicines, and it got in my head, I don't want to do anything that's going to mess with this stuff. So mm -hmm. get through this and then see where I am. And I've always been good at not, I mean, I, I a little bit of an opener, but I had alcoholics in my family. So mm -hmm. I've been grateful and lucky that it never took over for me. Mm -hmm. And I've always been able to walk away from it. I miss, I like an occasional drink, but yeah. it's so important. And yeah. you get older, you get like, you're finding there's other things you got to do. And even going to bed early sometimes is like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a you know? yeah. <laughs> I mean, the days of running and going crazy, it gets less and less as priorities change. You yeah, know? man. It's faster. Well, Time is faster hours. these days. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, you're doing your own thing. That, I think makes up for a lot. That's mm -hmm. one of the things that's hitting me of going, okay, this year you've honestly taken a break. Uh, I've had a lot of things happen, lost a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a, a, a kind of a, just needed to step back. 
And, yeah. But the drawing kept pulling me in going, don't you miss this part? You know, mm. you miss being that little boy who used to just draw and make up stories and my father would come in and just love hearing me tell him, tell him what the hell I was doing. And mm. that was my storytelling days. And I mm. look at what I'm doing now and go, I don't I want that. You know, mm. I don't care if it's for DC, Marvel. I've drawn Batman to the cows come home. Don't mean I don't disrespect it. I just mm. don't see it for me. It's yeah. now finally looking up and going, what's your Batman? What's your guy? If you were given something to do, what would you do? And I need to do that. What's your death space? How are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm kind of like, all right, it's time to turn that into that. And going to the bar and, and running around the streets is not going to get me to do it. <laughs> <So, laughs> <laughs> oh no maturity <laughs> you caught it at 43 you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> i blame i blame a uh, bar 13 man <laughs> oh dude i here's the thing the with all that said and done i would um, never ever that and chetty red was it chetty red <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Any red bar for oh, yeah, I yeah. would never turn I would never give that up to save her. I wish we had film. <laughs> yeah, you know? I know. I know we had a stack of photos. I only got one set of photos. I would love oh, to see. Oh boy. Oh boy. I, I, <laughs> I hid that already in my story. <laughs> oh shit. You didn't do, you didn't destroy them, did you? No, no, I didn't destroy oh, okay. them. It's too precious, man. It's too precious. Well, you gotta man. share them one. At least you share them with me. Just this drop them. <laughs> I'm I sure so. I've I've shared a lot uh, to you. Uh, you with, gave uh, me some. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I will. I'll definitely try to find them again and uh, send send some to you. I mean, here's the sad them. part: we have the memories of the real moments. Yeah, yeah. The ch that Chetty Red moment where yeah, I got thrown <laughs> on the couch. That was that was unique. <laughs> but um, that's, that's the best way I go. That was unique. <laughs> that was, I, that was, wait, I was like, how how did that happen? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to protect me. Yeah, so protect me. Right? I'm thinking, wait a minute, she's only half my size. How does that work? You know? We're supposed to be your bodyguards, and we're just like, right. nah, let it, let it happen. Uh, right, right, let it happen. See, it was the next thing that come out of your mouth. Put it on film. You know, that was the one moment nobody whipped out a camera and phone. Oh, uh, oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Man. You know? man. But that was a great moment. <laughs> that was, we had that. The the freaking blackout was the best. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Speaking of blackout, Ed, Ed, uh, Ed uh, was there. Ed was the funniest that night. <laughs> because like he he had to um because remember uh the train wasn't working and he lives in jersey right, right so right. he yeah we we all had to uh i think we all had to uh sleep over at um uh at otis's house did you go there time. okay who had it who, no yeah you know go ahead no i think i think they did i i went home yeah. i walked home that's it because i knew it was something yeah. about a ferry and yeah. watching there's something oh jeez, yeah yeah and then well, I, had, I had that interesting night. So that was kind of <laughs> <laughs> and it was making it worse than what it was. It was it was just special. It just it wasn't as great as it should have been, but it wasn't bad either. But anyway, yeah, it was, no, it was just, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, everything we did was memorable anyway. So you know, you know it's just the the companionship was just you know amazing. I I talked about that in the last podcast I did, um, which was yeah. funny. It was about, I was telling them how coming from comics where I had all these people who I came in with, but we weren't close. Or mm. I saw them in, which is probably why a certain group of people I don't hang out with anyway right now. Because they were too cliquish. There was too cliquish, too, you know, and they were too much into one-upsmanship and I just was never into that shit. Mm. And then here I would have my chance, you know, with you guys and nurturing you guys and the artists and I watched this team happen. And that's all mm -hmm. I ever wanted was a team of people who watched out. Like, I remember telling you guys, look, if I die tomorrow, you guys can continue the show. And that's the most yeah. important thing. You know enough. You have to trust yourselves. Enough. And how, you know, you guys were so tight. No matter what happened, I knew you had my back. Mm -hmm. And that the production was going to go. And the production continued. And even the producers yeah. weren't used to that. They were... You know, in their mind, they want to keep people separated. And it was yeah. cracking point. It's too late. These guys know themselves so much. They know the work so well. You couldn't separate them if you had a crowbar. 
which yeah. is good. And yeah. that was something I wanted in comics and I never found. Mm. Um, but here in this particular show, whether it was with you guys, whether it was my guys who I did Dead Space with, um, mm. it was funny. Spawn, we didn't have that. Spawn, we had a whole different thing where it was mm. literally meet the directors and the head director and myself running the ship with people jumping off. And we had to yeah. keep it going. And we had people who we could trust and some people you couldn't trust, mm. which was always interesting. Because it was like, uh, you know, it was just us. I always call it like mutiny on the bounty. <laughs> we had to keep the bounty. <laughs> yeah. And not let the mutineers know that, you know, you're done. And, but other shows, not at all. Like I said, if I was gone, and, and when I was gone, you guys are the ones, I believe, who kept it going. Mm. And Turtles got done because of you, you guys. We stuck together. Yeah, that's for sure, man. It, but it was you guys that did it. I knew that because I could see it. And I and I got the reports back, you know, from certain people <laughs> telling me things. I'm like, yeah, you know what to do. You don't, you know, don't worry about it. Yeah. And that was all that I cared. I saw that and I enjoyed that. And so mm -hmm. for myself, it was like, if I do anything again, it has to be as close to that, mm -hmm. or bring that same thing to myself. That trust, that belief, that camaraderie of yeah. ideas. Do shit that you like. If you don't like it, don't do it. Yeah. It's gonna suck. Trust me. <laughs> you know, yep, you yep. love it. If you don't love yep. it, it's not ever gonna be worth it. You know, yeah. should you make money. That's why I, I guess I was looking at Disney the same way. It was like I listened to some of those guys. But how can you love that? It's so mm. good. Together. But you're just happy to be there. But I'm not hearing one guy going, "Let's take a chance." I always, mm -hmm. I always wanted to be with that kind of thing. So. <laughs> I like to think my career has been a version of that and I'm happy with that. Yeah. And as much as I couldn't do that in comics, well, now I have a chance when well, I might have to, I can do that in comics. It took all this time in animation to get the, yeah. let's say the, the belief, um, mm -hmm. how he falls to finally come to yeah. that point. Well, yeah. Wow. I do this. Mine. I do this. Yeah. yeah. And I urge every art, young artist to do that somewhere in there. You take the role, you take the controls, you do it. Take a yeah. chance. You fuck up. Yeah. Believe in yeah. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, I look at what I see you doing and you, you're doing every fuck. You went from I gotta sing karaoke so I can have the balls of singing a band. How many damn bands were you in? <laughs> and they were all fucking good. I remember three things, you know. So but you know, but you did. And and you did, and you found yourself, and then your artwork just exploded you know and it was like okay if you can do that why am i not doing that you know mm, yeah if i'm going to give me the idea of that then i should be able to give that to myself so it took a while yeah. it's taken a while i'm not there yet <laughs> <laughs> you know? but i mean like you know chuck i have so much respect for you man you, you like i definitely put you like uh right there with my dad and uh with my uh people i uh really admire so um well, you know how i feel I, about I, you. I believe in you man i believe in you man oh thanks dude no i mean you know how i feel about your dad dad's one of the most incredible artists i ever worked with i mean he's every time i worked with him was always it was inspiring to me again mm. i saw things he would do that when francis is doing it why am i not doing that <laughs> 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 or, yeah. or you know what am i holding back because i'm watching him just do it and that was mm. okay stop, sh just shove me and yeah. i got by looking at him you know? Yeah. And uh, well, I, I look at you all the time, man. And, you know, I just oh, like everything, everything. So it, it goes in circles, I guess. <laughs> it does. It does go in circles, you know? And again, I think about everybody. I wish we could all get together again. I mean, I would love yeah. to see. Um, well, I can set up a whole uh, a whole uh, thing like this with the whole group. Sure. I mean, sure, why you know, not? at I least, at least like this, you know what I mean? Sure. Why not? Shit. You know, because yeah. last time we got together was uh, the karaoke night. That was fun. Oh, um, that was a long time ago. Holy that was a while ago. But oh my! Goodness. I didn't realize how long ago it was, but it was. Yeah. But no, this is this would be great. I mean, I would love that. I'm mean, just to yeah. even just to tag in. It's inspiring me now. I know I got to finish with. I mean, I'm right now. I'm drawing for my grand nephew. Um, you know, he's oh he's yeah, uh, Optimus. Nice. Yeah, so I'm I'm doing this for him. Let me go. Dude, so I he, love that you still. I love that you still rocking the paper and pencil, man. That's that's amazing, dude. It's just a tool. I mean, there's a part of it again. 
I got to get past that and do digital because I have someone who yeah. I actually am in the middle of a project that's NDA that mm. I really need it and it's going to be big. And so I'm thinking, okay, what's the fastest way to do this? I can mm. do it on my no, that's but that's awesome. It. That's awesome. Because <laughs> so, at least you have an original. I mean, like I never have yeah. an original work from my. But that was the other thing. Yeah, yeah, original work. That's the other thing that's been really an eye opener. Original artwork um, mm. is very can be lucrative, can be yeah. satisfying. Yeah. So I like having that and doing that. So yeah, that's why I'm kind of like not. I mean, I got that 24 inch damn thing. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> 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 but, well, I haven't but, touched mine in a while too. I haven't touched well, mine in a while, so yeah. And you know these damn things, you know, I, I can't, I can't. Oh yes, <laughs> look, I have, I have one too because of oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> this thing, I don't know. I forgot who taught me. I, I, I really, I, who the frick taught me? All I know is that those things are the greatest. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's the same. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I remember that man. Post is their best friend. They are. They are. They are your friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chuck, uh, it's been a, it's been great talking to you uh, for this long. I, I didn't even notice the time. We've been talking for two hours. <laughs> oh shit! No, we got to get me out here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, like, I don't want to oh, take too much of your time, man. I know you got to, you got to do a lot of things. But... Teachers and stuff. <laughs> so. <laughs> But um, thank you so much for being on here, and uh, it's awesome to catch with you, catch up with you, man. You know, it's great I'll to see you. Here. Same here, man. It's always a pleasure to see you. you know, so don't I'm, miss I'm gonna, pleasure. yeah, yeah, of course, man. I always just chat with you anytime, anyway. So, um, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to set up the uh, the group chat, and then uh, so we could all talk to each other and yeah. just like catch up. You know what I mean? Oh, great shit. Yeah, because what didn't Jason come on Facebook and was complaining that nobody said happy birthday to him? Jason Lamb. No, it, oh, Jason Lamb, yes. <laughs> I had to tell him happy birthday. I was like, yeah, come on. <laughs> poor guy, poor guy. <laughs> right? well, it's, well, it's not it's not posted on his, uh, so you don't get notification if it's his birthday. Yeah, you it's not don't. Posted on his, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so he, we, he, it's, it's a goofy thing we have to keep working on. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's Jason Lamb. He's like the, you know. Mascot. You know, <laughs> <the mascot. laughs> Oh, I miss that guy, man. But anyway, Chuck, thank you so much, man. Thank you so well, much. And um, I'm not going to take uh, too much more of your time, but I'll definitely hit you up again uh, soon for the group chat. And uh, you take care, man. All right, man. You take care too. All right, brother. Thank you. Bye-bye.